In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to perform elementary row operations. So for the first example, we have one half R1 listed next to the first row. What that means is that we're going to multiply all the elements in the first row by one half. Everything else is going to stay the same. So 4, negative 8, 6 will become 2, negative 4, 3. So if you multiply 4 by a half, you get 2. If you multiply negative 8 by a half, you get negative 4. 6 times a half is 3. And of course, we need to multiply this 2 by a half, which will give us 1. And then we'll rewrite everything else exactly the way it was before. So that's how we could for, um, perform this particular elementary row operation. Now for the next one, we have R1 being interchanged with R2. So what that means is that we're going to switch row one with row two. So these numbers that we see here, we're gonna write it in the first row. So it's gonna be six, negative one, zero, and then a two. And then the elements in row one, we're gonna move that to row two. So we're gonna have two, five, negative three, four, and row three is gonna remain the same. So that's the answer for this particular problem. Those are two common row operations that you'll see in your homework. Now let's try another example, but it's gonna be different from the first two. So let's say we have the numbers three, four, negative two, one, and then negative five, six, two, seven, and four, negative three, zero, two. Now, what would you do if you saw something that looks like this? Let's say we have a two and then R1 plus R3. If you were to see something like this, what it means is that we're going to multiply the elements in row one by two, and then we're going to add the elements in row three by that result. And notice that this row operation, it's placed next to the third row. So the results will go in the third row. So we can rewrite what we have in the first two rows because that's not going to change. So starting with this equation, we have 2R1 plus R3. So in the first column, R1 is 3, R3 is 4. So this is going to be 2 times 3 plus 4. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4, that's 10. So that is going to go in the third row, first column. Now, focusing on the second column, in the first row, R1 in the second column is 4. R3 in the second column is negative 3. So 2 times 4 is 8 plus negative 3. That is positive 5. So that's going to go in row 3, column 2. Now, moving on to column 3, R1 is negative 2, as we can see here. R3 is 0. So it's 2 times negative 2. We're going to get negative 4. Now, for the fourth column, it's going to be 2 times R1. R1 is going to be 1 in the fourth column and then plus R3, which is 2. So it's 2 plus 2, that equals 4. And that's all we could do for that example problem. 
Now let's work on one more example. This one is going to be a little different in its presentation. So let's say we have the numbers 4, 6, negative 2, and then 7. And the second row is going to be 0, negative 8, 1, 3, and then 5, 2, negative 3, negative 4. Now, let's say above the matrix, you're given the row operation. It's 3, R1, plus R2. What will be the new matrix after you perform this particular row operation? Notice that the row operation, it's not attached to any particular row. It's not attached to row 1, row 2, or row 3. So where would you put your results in? Would you put it in row 1, row, one, row 2, or row 3? What would you say? So if you have a row operation that's not attached to any particular row, what you need to do is look at the last one, R2. That is where you're going to put the results in R2. So if you ever were to see a question where this is not attached to a particular row, look at the last one. That's where it's going to go. So we can rewrite this like this. We could say 3 R1 plus R2, but attached to row 2 because that's where we're going to put the new results. So row 2 is the only row that's going to change. Therefore, we can just rewrite what we have in row 1 and row 3. So now let's perform the row operation. Starting with column 1, R1 is 4, R2 is 0. So this is 3 times 4 plus 0. And that is going to give us 12. So that is going to go in the first column, second row. Now moving on to column 2, we can see that R1 is this number, it's 6. And R2 is negative 8. It's this number. So 3 times 6 is 18 plus negative 8. 18 minus 8 is 10. Now for the next one, it's going to be 3 times R1 in column 3. That's negative 2 plus R2, which is 1. So using these numbers. So negative 6 plus 1, that's going to be negative 5. Now for the last column, we have 3 times R1, which is 7, plus R2, which R2 is 3 in the last one. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 3, that's 24. So this is our final answer. So that's how you could perform elementary row operations with matrices.